rips off the opening shot is space and a sudden large spaceship flying past the camera thing from, well, science fiction in general. But just because it's easier to pick one, Star Wars. Come on, guys. We made dinosaurs look realistic back in 1993 with Jurassic Park. How have we devolved so much after 21 years? The Arctic? You might as well just say someplace cold. Or Earth. Where the f*** did these come from? Remember the establishing shot? No icy dinosaurs to be found. Remember the shot just before this? Yeah, those are the same bulldozers and everything. With nothing but rocks. In case you thought Texas could be anywhere else. And just like the Arctic, it's so undescriptive as to be not worth pointing out in the first place. You might as well just say America. Guitar strumming will convert the wealthy one-time Marky Mark into a simple man character we can all relate to. I think it's pretty obvious that the billboard would actually read Chicago Strong. City name Strong is clearly the rallying cry format for tragedies based in American cities, right? Also, remember Chicago? Probably a good idea, but today I'm going to remember Peter Cetera. Also, who puts billboards in cornfields on deserted dirt f***ing country ass roads? The movies nowadays, that's the trouble. Sequels and remakes, bunch of crap. F*** you! You don't get to make this joke after building an entire career out of the shit this theater owner is bemoaning. That's like having your cake, eating it, and then saying, f*** cake, I'm above it. You know, folks used to come from miles around to see the dancing girls with the big cha-chas. Swear to God, I am one diaper change away from poisoning his oatmeal. In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. You see, I can make no sense too. So Prime basically got shot to hell after the last movie and then I guess drove his ass all the way from Mexico City to this theater in Texas and then just pooped out without anyone noticing? Two more weeks, girls, till no more classes ever. Yep, that's exactly how teenage girls talk to each other. Either her friends read the script and knew Bay wanted this long driveway shot or else they're assholes for dropping her off so far from her actual house. The Battle of Chicago. Is that what the news is calling the alien invasion that happened in the middle of Chicago? because that sounds just like a forgotten battle of the Civil War to me. Previously on Transformers. A swift act of Congress put an end to all joint operations between the military and the Autobots. Wasn't this already done before the invasion? The Autobots were all being sent off in a rocket, remember? So Congress, after everything that happened, decided to pass the exact same legislation they did just before the invasion? Also, these movies need to stop giving us stupid reasons why the Autobots aren't wanted or needed. Plus, it's going to add another 30 damn minutes to this movie to bring them back, another five minutes to this video expressing our disbelief. And the age of the Transformers is over. Can't we just get to the robot fighting and forget about all this? Also, buy my stars and garters. Is that Kelsey Grammer? How Skype would actually work is you'd call the person first, then fail three times, then finally get them. It definitely doesn't happen with a few clicks of the keyboard. Also, f*** you movie and Skype for showing us a practically 4K HD viewing experience that is 100% not possible. Dead hot mom cliche. Family with money problems has amazing internet connection and daughter has all the boots. What did you say? Like a hot teen, Ager. You can find some kind of pedophilia joke in nearly every Michael Bay movie. We call him on excessive explosions or casual racism, but joking about a grown man f***ing a teenager, we look the other way. I own this house! It's not for sale! Does the bank actually try and sell your house by sending out a realtor before they foreclose? Because, no, they don't. Holy sh! That is the girl from The Last Airbender. And her acting hasn't improved one bit. Actually, it's gotten worse. I promise you, one day, I'm gonna build something that matters. Character believes stupidly impossible thing that will no doubt turn out to be true. Just like the key dust bullshit Shia believed in so much. How do we know they're evil? They're in black SUVs and tailgating. Got a heat sig. A heat sig? What the f happened to your Energon detectors? Fire! They're firing this very likely inaccurate weapon at the ship while they have troops on the boat and a helicopter in the air? We are all in danger! I lost a sister in Chicago. People know that the Decepticons destroyed Chicago well before the Autobots showed up, right? He's mine now. Why do these powerful robots need the military to help them do a job they could easily do on their own? You know where I was for my graduation? Do you mean from medical school? Because a backwards baseball cap does not make you 18 all of a sudden. Shooting star? Wait, the f***? Why? Is this Spider-Man 3? Wanna hook this back to a working battery? Yeah, because this alien technology totally works with regular ass car batteries. The following line of dialogue is delivered without sarcasm. I'm an inventor. This could be a game changer for me. Wait, wait, wait. He said, help me with the pulley arm. Then the girl walked into the house. Then he was holding a missile that leapt up from his grasp on its own. And suddenly Optimus is alive? The f***ing f***. Three direct hits, a mortal wound. Then your men allowed him to escape. Again, why do these assholes need the CIA's help, aside from information? Why do they need the military team to help them take down Autobots? You all think you're the center of the universe. You have no idea. And I guess the visit is over. So that's why they met out in the Arctic? To talk about a failed mission? 
Surely there was a better reason to drag Kelsey Grammer all the way out here than that. I'm trying to, but I just got hit in the head with a 10-foot cannon. Yeah, about that. How'd you survive that shit anyway? This footage of Team Dead Cemetery, or whatever the fuck, is clearly at dawn. But seconds later, we see HUD drive up to Marky Mark's farm at what is clearly midday. My face is my warrant. <sighs> the director said, let's have your character eat an apple, and then throw it before you're done. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Unnecessary slow motion. No. Got 10 seconds. 20 seconds later, CIA dude says, Seven seconds. And 19 seconds after that, You got two seconds. Also, this Cemetery Wind team has technology that reads heat signatures. How the hell did they miss this huge heat signature in the barn? <laughs> Super badass alien missile technology hits the house instead of the prime target. Come on, hurry up, get in the car, let's go! Daddy. Prohibited boyfriend ex machina. I'd like to remind everyone that this bullshit weapon earlier hit its target no problem. Now that they're firing at Optimus, nothing works. Even at point blank range. Why was the one Decepticon they were working with so far behind the humans in this one instance? What? You're not her boyfriend! His name's Shane and he drives, Dad! And thank God, because this is a chase scene. Discount the Lost World Jurassic Park. <laughs> Did a magic freeway show up in the middle of all this farmland? The f***? Sure, let's just smash through the bingo place. No one could possibly get hurt doing that. Optimus and Lockdown decide to have a fight in the same random place where our human heroes just happen to be. Kane! Why does Optimus Prime always commit completely heart and soul to the first human that helps him a little bit? For all he knows, Cade is a total asshole. And honestly, he kind of is from what the movie's shown us so far. Take out your guns and shoot them! Hey, smoke monster guy, why did you wait until now to give this f***ing order? Come on, you knew about this little ramp on the fifth floor and you knew there was another ramp at the bottom? And you've done this stunt before? Well, I'm not buying it. But even if I did, it's no wonder this chick can't get a scholarship. She's f***ing dumb for trusting anyone to do this impossible stunt on a regular basis. Movie sits and ponders what a tragedy Lucas's death is so that you won't ponder why the bomb totally missed everyone else. Movie masturbates Lamborghini shortly after supposedly awful death scene. Stay here till I'm sure we weren't followed. We are all targets now. I had to transform into a robot to say that, just to transform back and drive away. You got your ass kicked by a garage inventor from Texas. Oh, and there was a little matter of, uh, I don't know, Optimus Prime doing most of the damage? But sure, let's make Cade Yeager the ass kicker. So why does he sound like a leprechaun? That's racist. Oh, well, we're not in Ireland. Lucky Charms, we're in Texas. That's racist. One driver, one navigator. Just like Death Race 2000, this movie thinks drivers in the modern or future era need physical human being navigators in the car in order to race. I just got picked up by Red Bull. And we all just got dumped on by Red Bull. I just called the cops on you because this is illegal. She's a minor. We're protected by the Romeo and Juliet laws. Are you kidding? This whole movie is being derailed by statutory laws right now. They could have just made this girl 18 and Cade could have been just as angry as he is now, but no, we have to talk about goddamn statutory rape laws right now. Statute 2705-3. Actually, the statute clearly says 22.011 on the card you carry with you. So, anyone who carries around a card like this is some kind of rapist, right? This is my license to bang underage chicks right here. Hey you, you're too old to be f***ing that teenager. Oh, wait, never mind. He's got one of those little cards. Carry on, friends. Romeo and Juliet, huh? You know how those two ended up? No. Dead. No wonder this girl can't get a damn scholarship. All you had to do was report it, and now Lucas is dead. Right. Totally dad's fault about the evil government transformer assassin. I bet she blames him for her mom dying too, even though we all know who is to blame there. Also, how long does it take for Optimus Prime to figure out if they were followed? Somebody somewhere gave that order. I'm gonna find some fingerprints. You're f***ing going to f***ing do what? Thankfully, the place Optimus told the inventor to hide and wait is basically a backup inventor's workshop. This guy doesn't immediately swat the hell out of this drone after he sees it. Oh look, the f***up inventor can now control the KSI drone with an Atari controller. Good for him. Stupid cops. They're not at the ATM. They're at the second most obvious place. That ridge up there that you're not looking at. That was insane! It was awesome, but it was insane, right? The movie fellates itself. I'll find you in a compass. Oh good, more racial stereotypes. These are aliens from a different world, right? They're picking us off one by one. How? I mean, if they're able to do that, then how the f*** is this scene even happening? All five of you out in the open with a f***ing campfire? I don't think the kill squads are actually very good at finding you. Well... For the record, Super Dad, I'm not hiding with you. I'm hiding out with that big guy. It's either a sin that this actor is terrible and inconsistent with an Irish accent, or it's a sin that this Irish actor doesn't sound Irish 50% of the time. Regardless, it's annoying. This drone and I stole recorded footage of an Autobot raid. It's in pieces. But watch what happens here. The footage changes like an old VHS tape? When they designed this drone. Which they can't control or find. Chicago did not get built back in five years. That would have been nearly a generational thing with that much damage. Chicago KSI headquarters is like a fortress. I'm gonna find a way into their top secret military wing. Find something to blackmail this company and the government. Movie rips off the screenplay I wrote when I was seven. Movie introduces an entirely new character nearly an hour into the movie. Also, I see this movie's John Turturro or John Malkovich will be played by Stanley Tucci. Thanks for the laughs, dude. 
What was that sound? I don't know, but I'm sure movie's gonna spend a lot of undue time on it. Also, it's probably the sound of everyone in the audience snoring at this point. Transformium. That's what we're calling it. Is this a dumber name than Unobtainium? Probably not, but still dumb. Do you like music? Well, I'd probably say something about this Beats by Dre bullshit, but I'm honestly more concerned with how he's controlling the programmable matter with his mind and a flick of his hand. Because that's a more amazing scientific advancement than even discovering programmable matter. Hey, found a whole bunch of boxes of clothes. Just lying around next to a Goodwill. Nobody was using them. You stole mouthwash? I like to be fresh when I'm making out with your daughter. Here's another Michael Bay film populated with people who do and say things normal people would never do or say. Movie set design 101. Don't give two shits about logic. Why would the design team and the production team be in the same room? Why is work being done here requiring some to wear safety suits, but others to just wear street clothes? Do you care? Of course not. You just want a place to show us Galvatron. I modeled Galvatron after Optimus Prime. Why does he keep looking like Megatron? I don't know, but I bet it means that's Megatron. Simple coding. I'm not saying Stanley Tucci hasn't occasionally whored himself out for money in shitty movies, but even he has to be a little embarrassed about what's going on right here. YouTube's Cass G gets a cameo in the Transformers sequel, but ends up right back on YouTube getting mocked by us. We're still assholes, but probably not for this. Nobody puts baby in a box. Did that alien robot just make a dirty dancing reference? Yes, we can build them ourselves. And we can build them better. You just had a tantrum about how you couldn't build them better. You couldn't even build them the same. Which one of these f***ing on-the-run desperate assholes took the time to light all the rosary candles throughout this church? Answer, none of them. Michael Bay lit them, because the shot is always master to logic or common sense. You're so square. Who even says smooching? Is this line supposed to be ironic? Because who says square anymore? You talk to me like that? I'm beginning to think Bumblebee doesn't even want to get his real voice box fixed. Inspired by Bumblebee but better in every way. Movie will now waste time insulting Bumblebee so that he will go unnecessarily ballistic. Also, who did they make this Stinger commercial for? B, you got a calm down right now. I'm perfectly calm, dude. Movie hopes reference to The Big Lebowski will give it some street cred, but movie and franchise has gone on way too long for that to be a possibility. Why are they running a documentary about their new robot design in the very room where the robot is being designed? To motivate the scientists? You came to me on this, remember? You retire from the CIA. Clunky exposition is clunky. You need to deliver the seed. Caesar Flickerman just asked Fraser Crane for semen. I am officially giving up my fan fiction career. High-tech government facility can't detect when strange drone activity is happening. Same badge code scanned at two separate gates. Instead of doing security things about it, we came to find the head of the entire company to ask what we should do. Kate escapes because this laboratory makes no f***ing sense. It's not a Transformers movie if Bumblebee isn't changing into the most recent stupid Chevy muscle car design. There is a version of this conversation where you get to go back to your barn. Uh... You have no idea what you're involved with here. Really? My reply to that comment requires the removal of my glasses. Oreo bot. Also, I bet the overall bottom line production costs ended up being like 20 bucks after the car, beer, and snack money came rolling in. I broke the code. I own your whole genome. Except I can't get my Optimus Prime clones to come out looking like anything except Megatron clones, but you get the gist. We're done. What? We're not gonna kick a little bit of ass? The character voices my main complaint with this entire franchise. It's never been tested in the field. Invention that has never been tested in the field is going to go out to the field cliche. Were they not literally just in the heart of downtown Chicago? Because I've been to Chicago, and you can't drive from the heart of downtown in any direction and be in countryside this open within a few minutes. Ever hear of urban sprawl? I feel like I've seen this enough in the other Transformers movies that putting it in this one is excessive, pointless, boring, and stupid. Well, this sort of defeats the purpose of Transformers altogether, doesn't it? Cade and Shane knew to jump out of Optimus, but somehow didn't tell Tessa the plan. Also, how did Cade and Shane jump out the same door? Tessa was in the middle, so that means Cade climbed over his daughter to jump out of Optimus. Well, that chick is f***ing dead. Tessa runs to the field! Tessa runs into the field, and after a small sample size of results, decides that the road is still the safest place. Instead of, you know, running into the cornfield across the street. When you don't have a good reason for a character to constantly be in peril, just make the giant robot fight follow her everywhere she goes. I promise no one in the audience will notice how ridiculous that is. That's my asset. Pull Galvatron back. Dude, you ordered the untested Galvatron to go out there when you have this awesome Terminator bot to use? Is Lockdown like a person who can't open a pickle jar and someone loosens it and that's when he can finally open the pickle jar? Who sent you here? You think you were born? No. You were built. And your creators want you back. Movie keeps villains' true motivations for hunting Prime a surprise for basically no reason. And again makes us wonder if these robots f*** to procreate or not. God damn it. No. I wonder if we made all the slow motion in this movie into regular speed, if the formerly three hour runtime wouldn't come closer to 75 minutes. The deal's going down now. Picking up the seed at the recon point. So why is the recon point to make this deal in downtown Chicago? 
They could have just sent one of these helicopters out of the cornfields and prevent the general panic that the spaceship caused. Unfortunate accidental kidnapping leads to extremely fortunate and convenient eavesdropping. A deal is done. One prime for one seed. How did this deal ever happen? Did this guy come to Earth hunting Prime as his last collectible knight and instead of just finding and taking him, make an unnecessary bargain with a government entity? How did he know who to call on that anyway? Or did the humans send out a space message asking someone to come and sell them seed? These dickheads managed to not only drive here in record time and beat Chicago traffic, but managed to get to the exact spot where the ship landed with no issues. Me, come on! I guess we know why now this took place in downtown Chicago, so that our heroes could get on the ship. Hey, I'm not here to help you get your daughter. You're here to help me get my girlfriend. This guy has one line, and he just changes the particulars every time he says it. Engage dark matter drives. How does Lockdown not know he's got a bunch of intruders on his ship? Lockdown ship has booby traps. But apparently nothing to hear loud yelling or any other kind of security feature.